Hi everybody, how are you today? Hope that you're well. Since my last video, um, which was uploaded, don't ask me how, topsy-turvy, it was like um, it needed to be rotated and I couldn't manage that and it was a bit stressful actually. I didn't know how it happened and I couldn't undo it and then after um, a day or two, do you know what? I said to myself, I'm going to leave it like that because there is um, an artist, German artist, by the name of Georg Baselitz. Um, I'd have pronounced his name George before last week, but I looked him up and there's a video. I will try and leave a link below. And um, his name's pronounced uh, Georg, spelt like George without an E on the end. But anyway. 1969, he started painting these uh, portraits, heads, just completely turned upside down. And uh, I'm not a great fan of his work, actually. I prefer uh, Gerhard Richter, as far as German artists go. Um, but um, yeah, this guy sprung to mind after what happened with my video last week. And I just feel it gives me license to leave my videos as they are and then I'm killing two birds with one stone here I'm making videos um, with um, kind of biblical biblically related subjects and at the same time I'm doing art so yeah video art and um, I don't know bible based art all rolled into one protest art too so yeah I'm gonna keep these videos facing left because um, because the devil wanted to sit on the left hand side of father opposite to Christ and he was denied that and um, because of that he left the light and turn to darkness and right now his agents on earth are bringing in a new world order and like many others I've taken my stand against them so in that way I'm facing left so that's why I'm leaving these videos as they are as I've said it's protest art art protest art um, biblical based art um, all rolled into one um, yeah, I wanted to talk about also a uh, channel name because from last year, what with all world events happening and everything, my focus changed from Watchtower. Well, in fact, it had changed just just prior to uh, global lockdown um, because, I, I, as I've said before, the, the occult crossed my path. In December 29 and it was just like wow I mean it was just so amazing to see um, the power of it um, you know when you look in the book of Daniel and how the angels battled with the prince of Persia I'll have to look up the scriptures I'm just speaking at the top of, top of my head here um, the angel battled with the Prince of Persia and, uh, and, and um, Michael had to come and support him. So this battle that the angels have with the demons is not an easy battle. You know, they have power. And, um, and I saw that power in December 2019. So I know, I fully know what we're up against, but, um, Michael uh, will win, will win in the end. But um, yeah, what was I talking about? What was I trying to say? Um, yeah, the channel name changed um, from War on Watchtower to War on the Watchtower because focus changed from the Watchtower Organization of Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses to the Satanic Watchtower. 
I mean, the demons are watchers. They roam throughout the earth and their eyes are every, everywhere. Um, nothing misses their notice. As with um, uh, good angels as well, you know, Holy Spirit, they see everything that goes on good, for good or for evil. Um, but yeah, the, um, the evil ones have empowered their human subjects with a, a similar ability through modern technology. I mean, that developed all throughout the 20th century and, uh, and humankind has reached a level now where um, they can see everything. Uh, they can know what we say, what we view, um, where we travel via our uh, smartphones. And when, when you're out of your home, um, they can see whatever you do. When you're walking down the street, CCTV, they have a satellite system set up in orbit around the planet. Um, and I think some of these devices um, people have now within their homes are uh, what they called again? All those little round things that you talk to and ask to play music and ask any question under the sun. They, they, those devices listen to what goes on in people's homes. Alexa and Cortina and whatever. Um, so, yeah, we are living now in a time where um, we're watched. We're watched. And um, this tower has declared war on us. Um, it's declared war on just basically um, how we live life, you know, stealing our privacy in different ways. And um, ultimately, this watchtower wants us imprisoned within our homes, those of us who survive the genocide that's coming, that started. Um, they want to uh, watch your every waking moment. And even more than that, they've got devices or, you know, that you can put on your wrist or, I don't know, like, I saw something the other day where you can swallow like a, a tablet and it goes within your body and it can read all kinds of things about your yourself, about your, your, your body. And um, they want this information. They literally want you watched. Uh, from within your mind, your thought process, from your activities, um, yeah, just in every way, they have a watchtower. And um, I stand in opposition to it. I have to stand in opposition to it because it's all from Satan, the devil. These ones have been empowered to become an all-seeing eye in, in imitation of the Satan and his demonic forces. So yeah, they started the war. I don't. I don't want a war. I want to live in peace. I want a little house, and a little a garden to grow my vegetables, and just go about my business. I don't want this war. But they brought it on, so I have to stand. We all have to stand until this uh, nightmare is over. And it has very much been a nightmare here in England under lockdown since December. No, it was November the fifth. They put us under lockdown until the second of December. And they lifted it, and I think probably within a couple of weeks we were in lockdown again. And um, I've heard rumour that this is going to be extended until the summer. It depends on each county, but um, my town is its own um, borough council. I mean, the county of Bedfordshire, but Luton kind of has its own um, council within, within the county. We're not under county jurisdiction. So Luton, I see now in hindsight why that happened. Because Luton is like a test bed in, in, in a number of different ways. We are going to be a smart town. We set up loads of towers and stuff since last year. They started springing up. There were a few, but more of them um, went up around the town. Um, so yeah, the point I wanted to make is that from what I've heard... It's not necessarily going to be a national lockdown until the summer. Oh, July is the month I've heard. Um, but it's down to each council, each county. 
but um, Luton is, is um, under its own jurisdiction. So my feeling is that Luton will be um, under lockdown until a summer. It's just the thought of that. I mean, it's depressing. It's depressing when you go into town. It's like a ghost town. And what happened a couple of weeks ago, there was an announcement made that the, the major superstores were going to make it harder for you to access um, the store without a mask on. And I went, to, there's, there's Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda's, Morrison's, um, Aldi's and Lidl as well. Aldi's particularly was mentioned more than Lidl as clamping down on entry to their store stores. And I went to Tesco's and um, I was stopped at the door by a shop assistant. They're using, using the regular shop staff to enforce this um, entry to the store where it's well some, some stores are using like security you know proper security guard but tesco's is using their regular um store staff team and this young man stopped me at the door and said have you got a, um, a mask I said no i'm exempt and then he said well have you got a card and um i said i'm exempt and that you know that should be enough for you and he said, well, are you being honest with me? I said, well, yeah, I am. I'm exempt. And so he, he let me go in. But it was only the first week that they really questioned you for a card at the door. And then um, what happened? I decided to keep going into Tesco's. And um, the other times I went back and I, I was stopped at the door and asked maybe just one, once more after that. And I said, I'm exempt. And I went in and that person didn't ask me for a card. But what it is, it's it's the anxiety that I felt. I felt depressed the first week they brought this system in because the pressure of just like having that on you to just to go shopping, just to buy a bit of broccoli. You think, oh my God, am I going to be stopped at the door? And you know, how am I going to handle it? And what are they going to say to me? Am I going to get in? Am I actually going to be turned away? You know, and um, the build-up of that anxiety as you went, you know, nearer to the store, to go in to the shop door, you know, it's the anxiety about what you are going to face when you got there. And a um, number of times it was just a relief when I got through the door. And after the first week, 10 days, I mean, it's just kind of back to normal now. Somebody standing there like just a statue. Uh, last time, they didn't ask me anything. I just went straight through. Um but I had an experience again, the same first week it happened, the week before last, or last week. Um, the other side of the town, where my daughter and grandchildren live, there's a local store. And when I'm in the area, I pop in there. It's a little, little store. And um, I could see the no mask, no, no, uh, no mask, no service. Um, just a bit of paper or card, whatever, on the shop front. And I went in and I was immediately approached by this young woman and she said, have you got a mask? I said, no, I haven't got a mask. She said, well, we've got new rules in now. You need to wear a mask. I'm like, well, I'm exempt. Said, yeah, but we've got new rules in now when you need to wear a mask. Um, the notice is on the, wind, on the shop front. And um, I said, well, do you know what? I've got a little blue card at home on my kitchen table. I can bring it with me next time. Um, and I thought she'd let it go and let me go on a, a, about the business in, in the store. And she's like, well, no, we have these new rules and regulations now. And, uh, we, you know, you, you need a mask. And I'm like, OK, so well, what difference does it make if I uh, tell you I'm exempt or I show you a little bit of plastic that says I'm exempt on it? You don't need to get these um, cards from your GP. She said, well, you know, we have I'm enforcing the rules because... These are the new rules and regs now. You have the notice on the window. I can get the manager if you want to speak to the manager. I said, okay, get the manager. So the manager comes along now, a young woman, a bit older than that one, maybe. The manager was 23, 25 year old woman. And um, I was talking to her the same way I was talking to the other young lady. And, um, and she wasn't having it. They weren't having it. They were not going to serve me in that shop. Had I thought about it, I should have picked up the goods, gone around the store and left cash at the checkout if they'd refused to take my plastic. I don't think about that till afterwards. Um, and also a friend had sent me um, on my phone images of um, exempt badges and so forth. And I could have taken out my mobile and shown 
that to the manager. And I'm glad that I never, because I don't want to have to resort to using any kind of exemption card. I don't see why I should just to go shopping. That is succumbing to the mark of the beast. And a couple of times I have nearly succumbed to the compulsion that I'm, I've been put under. You know, every day you, you're under compulsion. You go out into the street uh, uh, to shop in and, and you're asked when you go in the mall or you, um, you walk up and down the mall or you go to enter a shop. That compulsion, that pressure is there to comply to the system. Feels like I'm swimming upstream a little bit, you know. You have to fight it. You have to not comply. And um, yeah, the week before last, they make it. They they made it just feel like it was so much harder. But um, somebody left me a comment under another video, and um, somebody not one of my videos, somebody else's video that I was on. XJ Dub Stewart. I was watching one of his um, Go Mask videos and. Uh, a comment was left that what happened to me um, when I wasn't served um, in, in the, uh, the store, a little store, was that it, that was illegal. They had no right to refuse to serve me or to pressure me because I was not wearing a mask. I told them I was exempt. And um, I checked the um, gov.uk website and I can't believe that from last March I never bother to check it and see it written there in black and white that you do not need to show any type of card that um once you say you're exempt that's it they should leave you alone and that isn't what happened that isn't what happened to me last week at the store where my daughter and my grandchildren live i had to i had to leave the store so i'm going to go back there maybe tomorrow because tomorrow um in england is the great reopening and um being as i don't know any shops that are opening i just wanted to just contribute in, in my own little way so i'm going to go back to that store tomorrow and uh, speak to the manager in the store and explain what, what happened to me because when the, when the manager uh, spoke to me there was a group of young lads about four of them and she turned away from speaking to me and spoke to one of these guys 15 16 year old boys they were um, three of them had masks on, and one of them had like his jumper over a jumper or a scarf over his mouth and nose, you know, the way people do. And she turned around to him and said, You know what? I've already served you once in the store today. I'm not serving you again. And they had a few little words and blah, de, blah, de, blah. And then she turned back to me and she carried on insisting that I have a mask on. Or, no, basically trying to say to me they've got new rules and regulations and implying that they're not going to serve me without a mask so I let it go although I could see that the young boy who lived in the area had been served that day without a mask and I explained to her that I lived the other side of town I'm not I wasn't local to the shop and that I would bring a card next time but she just was not letting it go but um yeah I mean it's not been great um and the lockdown and everything to do with it, it's just depressing, it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard trying to keep motivated and keep busy and it's winter as well, you know, you can hardly do anything at all, it's a struggle, I haven't got no television because I got rid of my TV licence, I might, I was thinking, get a DVD player and, um, and watch a couple of films and, and stuff sometimes, but uh, anyway, I've completely digressed about uh, my own personal feelings to do with this situation which isn't what i really want to talk to you about i wanted to talk to you about um i wanted to talk to you about when the lockdown ended on the 2nd of december and the mall was so busy you know coming up to christmas you know it was full of shoppers and i i was in there one day and I looked a few metres ahead of me, maybe 10, 10 or so metres, I don't know, something like that, 8, 10 metres, and um, I saw this black woolly hat on the floor, I've waffled on so long, how long is it, 90 minutes, oh, for the anyway, let me just finish this point, I saw this black woolly hat on the floor, one end of the mall, 
And I went about my business and I reached the far end of the mall and I saw another one, a black woolly hat on the floor. And straight away, I knew that meant something. Um, black hats down, basically, is what I mean. Two black hats down, two. And two is the devil's number. One of his numbers. 22 in particular. But anyway, what happened, um, I'd say, the night before Christmas? It was the 24th and uh, 23rd or 24th. It was dark, about seven o'clock ish, something like that. There was a knock at my door, bang, bang, bang. And I opened the door, and there's this young woman there. And um, she uh, was looking for a lady who lived two houses down. This is a row of ter terrace houses, quite a long row of terraces, terrace houses. She wanted a lady two houses down, a relative, I guess. She hadn't visited her for a while, and she knocked on the wrong door she's looking for margaret so no margaret lives down there count two houses down that's where she's at so off she went sat down here half an hour later another bang 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 at the door and there was a young boy 13 year old like oh um is is leo there i'm like no i think you've got the wrong house leo's a young boy another 13 year old lives two houses down the other direction sat down here and I thought, my, what's going on? That's too much of a coincidence. I had a similar experience like this years ago and I was Jehovah's Witness to do with something and it was definitely the spirit. Two black cats down in the mall and two people knocked my door, you know, one after the other, looking for somebody two houses down. Margaret, two, two, two houses that direction and, and Leo, two houses the other direction. Two twos, twenty-two. Two houses down. Do you know what that means to me? In light of what I've learned from uh, the Baphomet, you know, with the devil touching the earth and controlling the earth and uh, breaking through the atmosphere of Mother Earth, him and his demons, the giant phallus, um, and what I've learned from the Devil's Bible, yeah, with uh, the Antichrist cross facing two crosses facing down. Like the star, the up, the pointed star is facing down. The devil and his demons are coming down to the earth. And um, I just said that in past tense. I believe they're here. They are here already. They're just waiting for the right time to show themselves. Anyway, yeah, there was one other thing. Even as I've gone over time, it's going to take hours to upload. I might as well show you this. Yeah, can you see that? I know it's the wrong way around. You don't have to be too bright to see that it says zebra. And what about this? Same thing, zebra. Spot the difference? Can you spot the difference? I'll show you it all in one go. Yeah, Zebra or zebra. I guess if you're American, you might pronounce it zebra. Um, and the reason I'm showing you that is to give you a bit of homework. If you've been following me on this devil, uh, devil's Bible drawings or hieroglyphs, um, there is in the the drawing of um, the devil when he's got his hands up, he's got the loin covering on. I noticed that there's three letters. There's a letter Y, and there's two a letter Z's. There's two Z's. So, yeah, have fun trying to find them. Um, if you find them, let me know. Um, if not, I'll, um, well, either way, I'm definitely going to cover that in the next, next time I get a chance to uh, do a video on that um, illustration. And, um, yeah, talk more about that next time. Okay, bye for now.